Hello, this is Salvatore Bensiguera, and welcome to this video on um, what I do during pre-planning as a teacher and what does my classroom look like. Today, uh, you know, is we just finished this first week of uh, the school year and uh, it is quite exhausting for many teachers out there. And I wanted to just basically give you an overview uh, as to what I do and uh, help others maybe prepare uh, for the future and what do they do at the end of the school year that would maybe help them uh, into the first week of school so that they're not going to fall on their face in their classrooms and so forth. And, uh, but let's do some background as to uh, what I teach and uh, what my school picture looks like. The school that I teach at has approximately 500 students that go to it in both middle school and high school. So it's a very small school and it creates some very unique um, challenges uh, for a music educator and for a school because how can you, you know, develop three different uh, music programs and make everybody happy um, in, in all of them. And so I teach beginning band, I teach advanced band, I teach beginning orchestra, string orchestra that is, and advanced string orchestra. And then I have two chorus classes. And um, this year there are middle school and high school students combined into one classroom. And there are pros and cons of that and I can have a whole other video on discussing how that is good and bad for both the students and the ensemble. Um, but as um, an ensemble in just general, um, all of these students have to understand that they're coming together as a team. It's very family oriented, um, that we can have a sixth grader in the same class as a senior. And um, in a, a lot of music classes, and maybe it's not in other core classes or academic classes, as you would say, because I consider music an academic subject and others may not, but um, it creates this unique um, scenario where um, you are ability-based and uh, you can put um, students who maybe are very young but very talented in the same classroom with some older students who maybe have those same skills and uh, how it works together students have to be understanding of their different levels and different abilities and come together uh, to make success happen in the classroom. So um, that's basically an overview of the school and the classes that I teach, which are very unique. Now I'm going to talk about what I do in pre-planning the first few weeks before school starts and how to prepare for the first week of school that, um, and you know, try to troubleshoot all the different problems that I may have. Well, it actually starts in the last few weeks of the previous school year in which I am planning dates and organizing my field trips and getting my music organized and trying to see um, well who are going to be my students for next year so that I, uh, in the fall that I can come back and kind of have things organized and I even photocopy a lot of the music and a lot of my syllabi or handbooks in advance so that way when I walk in the door I can worry about problems that may occur either in pre-planning or the first week of school. So it's important to always think ahead and most music educators or musicians are always doing that. We are very proactive people and that helps us do our job even better. Um, and so those are a few tips that I do and you know just having those expectations. If I would highly suggest that if you're a regular academic teacher, you may create a syllabi, but um, music educators create more of a handbook. And you can check out my handbook. It's on my website, www.vinchymusic.com. And you can take a look to see, well, what is in that handbook that I have? But I go through um, class rules, expectations, what do you need for this class? And I have parents sign off on it and return it. And um, the most important thing sometimes is getting those signatures from the parents and the students and their email addresses and all that contact information so that you can properly correspond with them. So that's basically what I do in pre-planning.
when students first walk in, they get to see their achievements and awards as soon as they do so. There's many different awards that they can earn throughout the school year, and uh, they are displayed at the front of the class. On this side of the wall, my rules are in simple form, and I also use these rules for my chorus. In my handbook, I get into more detail about these rules, and I explain them to my students. There's also this very helpful series of posters on character education, which I really do find is necessary and goes hand in hand with the rules that I have for my classroom. There's, of course, the fire safety and other safety materials on the walls. In the back of the room, there's the percussion instruments. There's a TV, which can be used for audiovisual. I really don't use it. I only show movies with it um, and other percussion instruments. We have our music stands off to the side. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about these paintings. These are some of my posters that I have and other artwork. There's Billy Holiday. Lewis and uh, Duke over there and at the top there is a piece of artwork by um, Marcus and Kinlana and he is an African-American artist that does many murals and if you've ever been to Denver or the Denver airport he's done um, some murals across our nation and so these are some of his pieces that I picked up in New Orleans at an art fair. Next to Louis Armstrong and Duke Ellington is another uh, piece of art. It's a numbered uh, glitché by Marcus, and uh, it, it depicts um, a sousaphone player on top of pilings, and someone named it the King of Lake Pontchartrain. Um, so it has that kind of name. Marcus really didn't name it, but someone else did. It's kind of uh, historical in that nature because it was done after Hurricane Katrina. You're thinking about how a musician saves themselves and um, one of the things that they love is their musical instrument. The other piece is done, um, it's a preservation hall poster and you notice that it's not in the frame exactly and that's to show people that jazz and art is not perfect. and Although we strive for perfection, it isn't always perfect. And we um, sometimes those imperfections are part of the art that we make. This poster was given to us by the Grammy Foundation, and it is signed by Gloria Estefan. And this is Music of the Heart. It's a wonderful movie on the life of um, a music educator in the orchestra world, and it depicts, I think, many and can relate to um, the life that many music educators have. As you can see, there's a piano in back of the podium, and what I do for chorus class is move the chair and the podium back so that it's not obstructing my view, but I work from both of these depending upon the class, and I have about six different classes that I teach. I have two band classes, one beginning, one advanced, two orchestra classes, one beginning and one advanced, and two course classes. And sometimes they're mixed with middle school and high school together, and one year or two, sometimes they uh, separate the middle school and high school students. In the front of the podium, I have my rubrics and expectations written out for students. It's in their handbook. They sign off on it. and. Um, one has to do with the academic um, criteria for grading, and the other one has to deal with the efforts and expectation for not only effort, but discipline too, because it goes hand in hand with um, our music classes. You see to the left the awards, and then a poster which I change occasionally. There is a music history timeline that goes across the board, Today was the first day of school, so 
um, you see I have an agenda listed at the top of what we did today and it basically was safety and introductions. We did never got to procedures or even the handbooks. That if we get a little bit closer to the top of the board, you see my name, my email address for students to email questions if they wish. It's a good way to contact um, parents through email, but students also like to email me their questions and uh, it's a great way to communicate with them as well. The grading criteria is posted again with the mission and vision of our school. This video is being taken at the beginning of the school year, so it's kind of blank, but I usually post an agenda for each class and what they're going to be doing on the board. I also have some of the checks from our fundraising last year, and I have the expectations, especially for a beginning and an orchestra students as to when they're supposed to have their musical instruments. And I usually start off with music theory for a few weeks uh, until they get their musical instruments. And they have a supply check, which is graded, and they're supposed to have their instrument and their book and everything that they need to get the job done. Once again, um, they have this history timeline, and I use it while I'm teaching music theory and music history to the kids as, as we go through pieces. Um, I wish somebody would develop a new music history timeline as it can be more beneficial in adding in uh, different significant uh, contributions of modern musicians. Uh, as we go below this, the board, there's my sound system. I use a microphone when I teach as the band can be very noisy. And then off to the right is just simple posters and um, my filing cabinets. And this is my office. As you notice, um, I value a note of thanks, and I find that that is a very important part of what people um, relay to you, that they appreciate what you do. And I put this next to my degrees because I think that that is something that students need to see. They need to see the real thing, and those are not copies. Some people put copies, that's okay, but I do put the real thing, uh, but people have to walk into my office in order to see that they are there and that I do have real credentials for doing my job. Then I have some books and other pictures of my students throughout the year, memorabilia, and um, I, I do value those pictures come in handy and I post them on the outside of the, the walls and windows so that they can see that. As we go down from this, I have the schedule or the many different schedules that we were to have throughout the school year in my office, not only here, but in on my podium at all time extension numbers. And this is a calendar for the Marine Band for 2018. I find this very helpful. Um, and, you know, and just a note there that, you know, one of the members of the Vince Aguirre family has been found to um, actually know and work with John Philip Sousa. So that's kind of interesting to discover recently this year. This is my desk area, and it's just developing, but I always keep water. I have uh, my megaphone over there in case I need it, and I do rehearsals outside. Also, I have a mini sound system that I can plug so that I can go into the courtyard and put my iPod in and rehearse because we have no uh, auditorium to rehearse our music. The desk is not really a desk. It's just a table, but it is a piece of art that was created. It's an Andy Warhol um, table with um, some plastic organizers at the bottom. It's a very simple type of setup. I'm glad you were able to get a sneak peek into my classroom. Um, it is very unique and our school is very unique. And uh, I hope to expand upon some of these different aspects of my classroom and teaching and learning in future videos. My next video that I will be creating is going to be one where I'm going to be sharing the methods to my madness. 
and um, how I plan for that and when do I teach music theory, what do I use to teach music theory and base that off of for my students, and then what band and orchestra methodologies do I use and incorporate um, to start students. And so please, thank you so much for watching this video. This is Salvatore Vinceguera. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe, and have a wonderful day. Thank you.